Hi, I'm Danielle from Life is a Party, and today we're gonna make our own custom doormat. I'm gonna give you all the tips and tricks you need to make this an actual easy, enjoyable craft and not just frustrating. I love changing up my decor in my home and even outside my home on my doorstep seasonally. So I love to decorate for each different season. Now, you might still have your Christmas mat out there <laughs> and your Christmas wreath. It's time to usher in spring with a new look and customizing a doormat is the perfect way to do it. I like making my own because then I can put anything I want on it and I think it's less expensive as well. These mats you can grab um, online somewhere like Amazon, Home Depot. This particular one is from Ikea and I always grab them when I'm there. They come blank and then you can customize them with any kind of image you like or uh, word that you like. So it's fun to change things out for each season like I do or you can do images instead of words. You can do uh, something like fall leaves in the fall or snowflakes in the winter. Uh, flowers for spring or little bunnies. The possibilities are kind of endless. The combinations of words, images, images, or words. Um, some people like to customize with something like their last name, you know, welcome to the Smiths, or a house number, a house and street name, whatever you want. And because of that too, they make really great gifts. You can capture somebody's personality, do colors you like, or literally customize it with their name or something. So there's lots of fun reasons why making your own doormat is a really great craft and you can use your Cricut to do it. So there's a couple different ways um, that some people like to make these doormats. I tried out several and I definitely think that using the iron-on is the easiest and also best results you're going to get. But let's talk about some of the other popular methods. So some people like to use regular vinyl to create their stencil for a doormat, but I found that, well, you can't use transfer tape because this doormat surface is so rough that the vinyl won't stick to it very well. So trying to remove the transfer tape from the top of the vinyl once you put it on here is like a nightmare. So you can't use that method like you would use if you were applying vinyl to like a smooth surface. So what a lot of people do is they just carefully remove the backing and try to apply the vinyl like a giant sticker or a stencil, uh, which is what it is. But the problem is that because we're using it to cut out this very detailed pattern for our different um, words we want to put on it, it's flimsy and there's lots of little bits and pieces and as you peel off the backing it tends to stick to itself and turn into like a sticker ball <laughs> instead of a nice flat piece so that is really difficult it is possible if you work really carefully some people like to you know cut their design down into smaller pieces in order to apply it like that but it's very hard to do and also at the end of the day the vinyl doesn't adhere well regular vinyl to the mat and you may not get these really crisp edges that you're after anyway even after all that headache so i'd have to say no to using the regular vinyl as a stencil um, and the stencil vinyl it's a little bit thicker and some people say it's a little bit easier to work with but essentially you have the same problem it's sticky on the back it wants to stick to itself and it's just very hard to work with another method that some people like to use is freezer paper and if you're not familiar with freezer paper it has wax on one side so you can apply some heat people like to use the easy press to iron it onto their mat and the wax will sort of melt down a little bit and give like a nice crisp edge for their stencil. It won't move around during the stenciling process. Um, but the problem is that the freezer paper is also really hard to work with. It's not sticky, but it's so thin and flimsy 
um, that getting it off of your cutting mat is a bit of a nightmare and it usually rips or tears. So you can do it. You have to work really carefully um, to get those pieces off the mat and then you can apply some heat. Um, but also with both the freezer paper and the vinyl, if you choose to do it that way, it doesn't adhere really well either. So you may have to use, some people use stick pins, some people use glue dots. Um, it just doesn't work very well. So let me tell you about the method we are going to use that I um, have had really great success with and that I would, this is the one I recommend to you. It's using iron on vinyl. And what is great about it is you have the backer sheet as the carrier uh, so you don't have to worry about it being flimsy or sticky. You stick it down on your mat and then you use your easy press to adhere it. To create a stencil, it works perfectly because you will get it to adhere really nicely around these letters and then you'll get these nice crisp lines. And then after you're done, you can just peel it off or if you're having trouble getting it off, you just heat it up a little bit again and then it peels right off. I think it is the best method to use and I just found it worked really well. It gave a really great result and it was not as frustrating as those other methods. We're ready to design our stencil in Cricut Design Space. So I've opened a new canvas and I'm going to create a template of our doormat. So to do that I'm clicking on shapes on the left hand side menu and I'm going to select a square. I want to change the dimensions to what my doormat is. So my doormat is 24, 24 by 16 inches. Um, and I'll just zoom out so that we can see the whole thing on our canvas. And I'll just go up here and change the color to brown just so it resembles the doormat more. We're not going to cut this piece out. We're just using it as a template. So it doesn't matter that it's telling me over here uh, with this caution button that this is too large to cut. When I'm ready, um, finished using it as a template and ready to cut out my stencil, I'll use the hide button to get rid of it. It's still there on the canvas, but if you use the hide button, you can't see it anymore and it won't cut out. But if you ever want to come back to it, all you have to do is unhide it. So it's a useful feature for things like templates. And now I want to add some text. I want to do text just in the right hand corner of my mat. And since things are warming up outside, hopefully soon, I am going to write, hello, sunshine. So my first text box, I'll just do the hello, and then I'm going to do a different one for sunshine. And sunshine, I want to do in all capital letters. So I'll shift these down to where they're going to be, sort of. And hello, I would like to be a cursive font. So let's go up to the fonts here. You can now filter the fonts. And I know for this, I want to do something cursive. So I'll click on it and scroll down. I'm um, an access member. I think that Babette looks good for my project and I'm already an access member so I can use it. It's included. If you're not, you can choose something else that's free or pay for it, whatever you choose. I think this looks good. I'm going to want it to be larger. So I'm going to just scale it up with that corner button. And the sunshine is in the Cricut Sans font and I actually like this. So I'm going to make it a bit larger. And I think it would be good for the stencil if the letters were spaced out a little bit. So I'm going to go up to letter space here at the top and just slowly increase it a bit. I think that looks pretty good. 
So I'm just going to eyeball it. I want it about the same distance from the top and the bottom. And then this one, whoops. I'm having trouble selecting the hello, so I'm just gonna go over to the side and select it there. That's a little trick, make it a bit easier. I feel like this should maybe be a bit smaller. I have the idea that I'm gonna stencil the sunshine letters in different rainbow colors um, and do the hello just in black. So the real star of this is the sunshine, not the hello. So I'm making it a bit smaller. And now I'm going to select both of them by, I already have hello selected. I'm going to hold down the shift and click on sunshine. So now they're both selected and I will go up to align and center them horizontally. So the hello is perfectly centered over the sunshine and I'm making a stencil. So I want these two letter um, words to cut out together. The spacing is what I want. So I'm while they're both selected, I'm going to go ahead and attach them here at the bottom, which is telling Cricut to keep them in this position when we cut them out. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my template and go up to save and save this as Hello sunshine doormat and I will make this um, a public file so if you want to do one that is exactly the same as mine you won't have to redesign it in Cricut Design Space you can follow me in Cricut Design Space let me show you quickly the way that you do that so we've we've saved this so now I'm going to go up here and click on the home button. If you want to follow someone, you can type in life is a party. That's me and hit search. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of this page, you'll get to community members. And this is me. Life is a party. Danielle, Nicole, Ramjist, and uh, I can't follow myself but you'll have a green button here and you can click follow. When you do that, you'll see all my projects that are public. And if you want to make any of them, you just click on them and you can choose to customize if you wanna change it or go right to make it if you wanna do it exactly the same way. Back over on my canvas, I've saved it, I'm happy with it, so I'm ready to make it. So I'll click make it. We're going to use um, Smart Vinyl today. So we're gonna be cutting without a mat, which works really well for these oversized kind of projects. Um, another option is the larger 12 by 24 mat. And I want to move this over to the center because that'll just give me a little bit more room uh, to cover my mat so I don't get paint where I don't want to get paint. And you just click on it and slide it over there. Then I'm going to hit continue and look for my material. So it's only giving me the smart um, options because I've selected without a mat so that makes it easy. I'm going to use the smart iron-on for this project so I will click on it and hit done and because I'm using iron-on I definitely need to remember to mirror my project so I'll go over here to mirror and turn it on we've all made the mistake where we forget that step and it's a bit of a catastrophe so anytime you're using iron-on you need to mirror your work and I'm going to select more pressure and it's telling me now I can load my vinyl and we're just going to use the regular fine point blade. When you load your vinyl you want to make sure that it's shiny side down so typically it'd be shiny side down on the mat and if you're using the smart material then it's going to be shiny side 
down as you load it into the machine. That shiny side is the backer carrier piece, which we don't want to cut through. We want to cut through the vinyl on the top. Once you've got your piece all cut out, then you're going to weed it. But unlike a normal project, you're going to reverse weed it where you leave the background piece because we're making a stencil. Then lay it out on your doormat. You can trim off uh, any excess that you don't need and preheat your easy press or your iron. Now this process is going to be a little bit of trial and error. I went with 305 and I pressed it uh, about 20 seconds at a time and then moved it around. Once you think it's adhered, then you can stop, let it cool down, and do a little test peel at the side. Once it was cool to the touch, it was time for me to test the peel. I started on the edges, but as soon as I worked my way into the letters, I could tell that it was still lifting a bit. So uh, I tested the other side too and decided for this middle section to just press it again. So I reheated the easy press and did another press on the middle section. I've just finished pressing it and I'm actually just using my burnishing tool here because I wanna make sure that that hot glue, I was just heated up that adhesive, is really, pressed into the fibers and because this surface is you know bumpy um, especially on these small pieces this um, this is going to help that glue get in there while it's hot and then I'm going to just leave this to completely cool again and then I'll try and peel this this middle section. So here's how it looks once it's all on and it should give us nice crisp edges but remember we're just going to be peeling it up after so the fact that it's like wrinkled around here doesn't matter at all. Now we're ready to do our painting. You can use a um, stencil brush if you want to or you can just use a regular one. The key is to stipple, so just an up and down motion. And you wanna do that until you have it completely covered and you can always come back and do a second coat as well. I've uh, let this paint dry and now it's time to peel off our iron on vinyl. And this just comes off pretty easily just with a little bit of pulling. As I continued to pull up the vinyl, I noticed that some of the mat was coming with it. And so I just put the backer piece back on over the vinyl and did a quick 20 second easy press. I worked in sections. As soon as that iron on vinyl was reheated, it came away really easily. I used my weeder tool to get those little tiny spots. I was so happy with the result. There was no residue whatsoever from the vinyl. Went over it with a lint remover and I love how the final product turned out. I really love how our doormat turned out. We've got these nice crisp edges all around our letters and a really fun rainbow effect as well. This is just one idea of how you can make a customized doormat. Use this method to make it say anything you want, any colors you want, or you can even do um, images instead of letters. So there's tons of possibilities. I hope you have found this helpful. There is lots more Cricut tutorials over at Life is a Party. Be sure to follow here as well for more ideas. Thanks.